Yellow. Yup. Ah, uh, so uh, how are you doing? It's been a it's been a while since our uh, coaching session. How long has it been? I think it's been like a few months, right? Oh, I honestly I don't remember, but I think so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been a while. A while. Yeah. So how's it going? How are you doing? Mm. Well, could have been better, but overall, I'm still alive. I'm still doing what I like doing. So everything is uh, great. Can't complain. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That's that's good. Uh, one minute. Let me let me just. Uh, I think this should be fine. Now. Like the volume should be fine right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just uh, boost the volume just in case. I think uh, your volume's a bit too low. Anyways. Like, okay. Yeah, I think uh, it's fine now. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, in case, like, if uh, some of you don't know who this is, this is Airu. Uh, is, is that right? Did I say the name right? Airu, yeah, yeah, Airu. it's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's the so way this it's is... supposed to be pronounced. <laughs> ah, okay. Because... Well, there's different ways to pronounce it, so I just wanted to make sure uh, I was right. Am I saying that the right way? Okay, uh, so this is Iro. Uh, he's he's like 9k, he's a 9k MMR player who plays for QWERTY right now. Yeah, yeah it's Cybercats right? Cyber right now. Cybercats? Okay. Oh, okay, so there was a change. It's ex QWERTY, like basically the okay, uh, okay. roster is still the same, but uh, the... Uh, okay. Name of the org is different. Yeah. Oh, that's actually cool. So he's he's uh right now he's ex quarty and uh, right now playing for Cybercats. I should have updated that. Um, I still. Uh... <laughs> that's Obviously. on me. My bad. No, no, no uh, it's okay. He's a nine game of a player, and I just thought we'd have him over uh today to have a quick chat and maybe try to play a bit. If possible, um, yes. So I just have a few questions I'd like to ask before we start playing. Uh, so, yeah, so, so is there anything you'd like to share, or uh, do we just uh, just 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 get started with the questions? I'm not super good at this. Like honestly, I'm just uh, pretty new at it. I mean, let's just have a conversation and see how it goes like if there is anything you want to know about mm -hmm. feel free to but uh, do i have anything to share well i've discovered some ways of me playing better <laughs> <laughs> and it's like uh getting some breaks between the games yeah. and it's like getting in the mood of well, I just want to play. I don't care what role. I don't care uh, if I win or lose. I just want to play. And sometimes the vibe is the same about the hero. And I pretty much enjoy the state because in the state, I don't care how good or bad my team is. I just perform. And usually it's like, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> just playing the uh, games of my yeah. life. It's very nice. Okay, so yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll just uh, get into it. So, uh, a while ago, you told me you were uh, grinding to reach nine uh, k, and uh, I know you've been uh, you've been uh, about nine k for a while now. Uh, yeah. you reached nine k uh, about a month ago, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, how's the grind been? Like climbing the ladder. How's your experience been? Like with the whole grind. I mean, it, it's been, of course, ups and downs. But at some point, you just... Well, you realize you leveled up. Mm -hmm. So it's been like, you know, all those... Uh, you, you remember that... Uh, <laughs> that's how Mafia works uh, ads. Like, basically, like, you level up from level 1 crook to level 10. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> Mafia also, and then it's like... Because you were playing with level one crooks, you you don't care anymore. You just win the game. But uh, it's also like what's important to understand. It's about like uh, 
the state you're playing in, it's very, very important. Because mm -hmm. like if you want to keep going into matchmaking when you're this high, like yeah. basically nothing really changes from rank 300 to rank 100, except... Well, there is not going to be a rank 100 in your team. So you're often going to be the one who is supposed to carry the game. <laughs> so in that scenario, you need to be at your best. You need to be able to support your team and give your team the plan to follow or to just like with your confident plays, being able to, you know, turn the game mm -hmm. around and it can like being super aware of things helps like for example you know that there is a brute spammer in enemy team and like you know that you recognize the nickname you basically always play with the same people so you recognize the name you say that there's going to be a brute like big chance that there's going to be a brute or there's going to be a tinker and what you do is um, you tell it and then your team is like, oh, I can play this then, or I can play this. And, you know, from the pick stage, game gets a bit easier. And uh, maybe you can squeeze in some free wins like that, just because you know some information about the players. I see. I mean, I think it's easier to know the names at the higher level, because uh, the, at the higher level, there is not that many people, I think. If yeah, uh, if yeah. that what you mean, yeah, uh, yes, yes, I get, it. I, I, I get that, I get that. In uh, so what I usually try to do is just uh, so there's this thing uh with Overwolf that kind of shows if someone's spamming or not. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, kind of use that to pick or ban, and uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But I kind of get uh, it's it's a lot more uh. Mm, how, to say, how do I put it? It's more uh, in draft, like you know these people because you played a lot with them over and over again because of how small the player pool is at higher levels, right? Yes and no. Basically, sometimes, well, Orwolf is very good at recognizing that, but let's say you played with one guy one year ago and you left to know that. This guy is like level 29 brood. Yeah. Right. And then when when you like do the thing with the overwolf, it kind of shows you like like the yellow note. Like mm -hmm. before the player nickname. And that's that's like maybe the other way how you how you know it. Oh. Of course, like it's well the the pick is like very important, but uh, <laughs> I've had experience when I just won with position 3 sniper, which is garbage. Or I was very close to winning the game. So, like... <laughs> yeah, I guess, call it? Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. The state also matters. Like, there is a lot of factors. Yeah, yes, but, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember, like, uh, during one of the coaching sessions you did uh, tell me about this too uh anyways uh on to the next one like uh so uh you played dota for like uh, how many thousands of hours now oh. i've uh, played it for like around three thousand hours myself uh i don't know like twenty five thousand maybe a bit more twenty four twenty five i think that's the number no oh. So in in all of this twenty four twenty five thousand hours of Dota, there must be something that you really like about it, and uh, something you really dislike about it. Can you tell me what those might be? Um. Well, well, I like the game. <laughs> <laughs> you you can tell by the amount of hours. Yeah. <laughs> um. What what aspect of the game do you really like? There has to be something that you really enjoy much more than the others. Um, like. 
well, you know, when I play the games, like let's say besides of Dota, like some mm-hmm. single player games. Yeah. I enjoy some indie games like Kingdom to Crowns, for example. I've mm-hmm. been stuck in that game for a while. So I had I think like my I don't know what it is, but it is the passion for the games, for the games to be complete. Like I need to complete the game. Well, the thing is about multiplayer games is well you can complete them, but uh I guess what makes it interesting for me is you always can have a better game. Like things can always be a bit better and I think that's what drives me forward. You can always get better and with Dota it just well challenging, interesting and it gives me emotions that well other games could give me such emotions but with such a constant uh rate i don't think so it's Mm -hmm. always the um how do you call it uh i guess it's just the ability to learn stuff ability to get better and like knowing that you can always perform a, a bit higher, a bit higher. And this a bit higher is, well, <laughs> you can reach it, but then you see that, well, there's there is even... also a bit higher. So, and, yeah. and this is just a ladder and you just keep going. Uh, and well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Replayability as well. You can have like, True. you can play a thousand games of one hero. And then, you know, there is still like a hundred. Something to learn about it. Sure, but there is also like 110 more other heroes. Yeah. And if, oh, yeah. if you switch to another hero, there is just another experience. And if you switch to another role, there's just just another experience. And it just keeps on going. Like, true. true. Replay- replayability aspect is like very huge. Well, yes, wow. yes. Like, I, I kind of get what you're saying because like, uh, so I, you've played it a lot longer than I have a lot more and are way, way better than me. So I, I might just, uh, be pointing out something you already know, but what I'm just, uh, I, what I just want to add, it was like, even if I've played a hero for a lot, uh, uh recently and, uh, well, if I'm even spamming it, like I can find something new, like every time i play it like oh if i've been playing something for 10 games in a row and suddenly i find out there's this thing that i can do with the hero that i didn't know it was possible at all just because uh, i saw someone else because that that's one thing i really like about dota where there's like um it's so it's so open right like uh there's a lot you can do with it it's not limited uh by anything it's limited with how you think if i'm not wrong yeah. i mean you cannot be wrong about that it's just how you think it's, it's just uh how you think like if you if you think this might work and there's a high chance it could work it, uh yeah and then yeah that's what i, I was getting to like that's something i really find uh, interesting about dota there's always something new I well cannot agree more. And uh, anything you dislike about it? Uh, well, every game has some problems. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there is just some very annoying heroes that are overpowered in uh, in the hands of uh, very good players, but what do I dislike? Other than techies, if you do dislike techies, I know a lot of people hate techies. Uh, I hate, like, there is another guy which also starts uh, with a letter T and ends with Inker. So ah. that guy is also very annoying. If you know that guy, just punch him in the face when you see him in pub. Like, I, you know, crush his game before, like, minute five. Just can't give us five. I don't know. Just crush his game. So, oh. I see. 
Yeah, the blood mm-hmm. boils when I hear that name. So, well... <laughs> Was this always the case or is it just because of the oh, new the changes? Patch. Just yeah, the patch. The, the new... Yeah, yeah, this patch. Like, the last patch, just take the Tinker and he's just a piece of shit uh, hero. But uh. here, you have him, you, you give him a TP, basically 2.5k... Um... Gold item. Yeah. He doesn't have to spend anything and then you give him... The, uh, like the matrix, which yeah, is defense matrix, yeah, and the ability to farm and be able to pressure the lane at the same time. So you basically have like laser maxed. Then Tinker just keeps farming while being able to kill you. That's like the unbalanced thing. I think they can make him balance by reverting the change of the laser or like making it so it only splits to one target. Mm-hmm. Uh, deals damage to like one closest target because like aoe blazers what the hell bro <laughs> come on isn't that like his axe thing if i'm not wrong like i don't play much tinker but um, doesn't he have to farm for axe uh, so until no, you, yeah you, you so so right now, right now how it works is um in the radius of 250 units you mm-hmm. get 100% splash. So if you oh. hit the camp okay. with a laser, you'll get 320 mm-hmm. damage to everyone. That's why Tinker is good at farming uh, like yes. ancient spots right now. Because he can just laser, refresh, laser, refresh, Greetings. laser, refresh. And he doesn't need the axe. He just farms the wave. Like, you know, two lasers, he farms the wave and goes on. That's like the oh. annoying, the very, very annoying thing. Oh, oh so I, I didn't know about that change because I rarely even uh, play Tinker. So I totally didn't know about it. So that's something new. <laughs> mm. oh, I, I've been going through a phase where uh, like we are totally, completely burnt out from Dota and um, we haven't played in almost a few weeks now. And uh, mm-hmm. we just played our first game today. So we are super out of the loop in regards to what's happening in the current patch. I see. It's it's one of the questions I have that I want to mm-hmm. ask. And uh, I'll get to it. Uh, I do have a lot more to talk about. So sure. th- currently Tinker is the, mo- the uh, one thing you really dislike about Dota. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's just the characters. Uh, sometimes they're... Yeah, they're overpowered. Well, I mean, uh, there is no. I don't. I don't think I dislike anything else. To be honest, sometimes just uh, the current state of the game is very boring, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But other than that, I don't think I dislike anything. Just in love with the game. If I wouldn't, I wouldn't play it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes, like, okay, so what I was talking about, like, uh, so, uh, if I take another game, like CSGO or something, uh, I really enjoy the game, right? But there is this one thing about the game uh, that I really hate, would be like, uh, well, not CSGO, in Valorant. Recently, I've been playing a bit of Valorant, and I really hate uh, how, the, how random the guns are in it. Even though I enjoy the game, I really hate how the guns are in it right that's something i really hate about it so uh, that's, the, the i was talking more like that the uh, mean, yeah the rng related to the guns uh, the, the spread to to the like to where you shoot the bullets right yeah like, yeah for yeah. example yeah i see i mean that's another thing to play around so it kind of gives you the randomness that you can maybe control somehow so it just and maybe you, you I, can find a way. Yeah. I know that in uh, CSGO you can control the prey of the weapon. Maybe it's the same in Valorant, but uh, I don't know. I never played Valorant. So. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Uh, like so in CSGO, if you want to control the spray of the AK, you have to do like a seven on the going in the bot. Like, uh, no, no, that is you uh, to do a seven. And, that is a spray control. The thing about Valorant's guns is like there is a bit of RNG uh, inbuilt with the guns. 
so sometimes uh it's like super accurate and sometimes you feel like it's intentionally inaccurate so that's something that's mm. uh built into the game and uh, everyone knows it's there so that's that's what i meant by something you dislike about dota so i i i get it like uh tinker might be the one thing that you hate about dota right now and that's also totally fine because tinker is yeah. still part of dota i it it's so much it give me ptsd when i hear some mines bombing i'm like oh fuck i'm dead I Tinker, I guess it's okay, but Tetch is like... <laughs> you know, I, I'm like afraid to do one little walk in my jungle and not getting blown off. Uh, you can you can play around Tekis as well. You can play around Tinker as well. Mm. Like both heroes are playable against, but... Is there, is there a common hit between the heroes named with T? Tinker, Tekis... Like, uh, they are like Uja. You... <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyways, anyways, let let's uh, keep going. Uh, sure. So, other than Tinker, what are your thoughts on the current patch? Yeah, it's fun. A lot of heroes, like because meta never stops, it always develops. Mm-hmm. You can now, like, you will later see heroes like. Patch being viable again on the off lane. Spirit Breaker is taking his turn. Soon people will realize how to play against Spirit Breaker, what heroes to pick. These heroes will become the meta. And then there will be heroes who are good against heroes that are good against Spirit Breaker. And you guessed what? After that, everyone remembers that Tiny is still viable on carry and the thing goes on. Uh, the <laughs> usual cycle. Like, uh, I've I noticed mean, this a while, yeah. Yeah, if meta is going to stay for a while, people will get bored. True. Or like, yeah, I- I'm getting bored, so I'm trying out new heroes, like, I don't know, Enigma, Sniper Offlane, like, what the hell is this? Enigma, that's supposed- a name I haven't heard in a while. Yeah, and some builds will occur to, to the heroes that everyone thought are dead, and the hero is... Viable again. That's like another part of Dota that I very like. You can be so creative that it doesn't matter if a uh, hero is dead, you can make him viable. Mm-hmm. Like, pretty much any hero is viable in some games. Just like, depending on how strong and flexible the hero is, uh, you can make it work in every game or in one in 100 games. Just, just that. But maybe with changing or adjusting the build, you can make the yeah. hero work 1 in 10 games, 1 in 5 games. You know, that's already not a bad thing, not a bad score for the hero. So that's, yeah. Don't think there is, like, too many things. Uh, eventually, like, uh, Tinker will be, like, found the counter to, I think, like, he's... <laughs> You know, Spirit Breaker and Tinker, they're kind of one of the same thing. Uh, they're countered by, by Yules, so. Some wouldn't, people will wouldn't, like wouldn't, um, well. Oops. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Well, no, I was just thinking if Spirit Breaker would work well against Tinker. Yeah, it does. It does, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's just like... Yeah, doesn't good yes so yeah i was just thinking that um so yes uh so next up uh, i would to ask uh your thoughts on the current oops my phone uh so uh, it's been it's been a year with the new dpc system and uh how do you feel like it is like what do you think about it uh, is it uh, turning into something good or does it needs to i mean do you think it needs more improvement uh what do you think about it yeah the only change i would make is, uh, <laughs> is a... well the the dpc especially east europe dpc needs cyber cats that's the only change i would make <laughs> <laughs> no but um, I think the, yeah sad that we didn't make it but uh well, We'll talk about that later. Uh, 
Well, yeah, that uh, is uh, going to be one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Sure. Uh, I mean, the thing that I would probably change is like the the only thing is you make the uh, how do you call it? Like, let's say top four of the people mm-hmm. uh, of the teams from the D- DPC Division One are like free to stay, right? Uh, where they are, and then eight that are below, they need to fight to adjust the slots to even like are they like worthy to stay at D one or no? Okay. Or are they not worthy? And that would be the um, fair system, mm-hmm. I think. So, so what what you're uh, saying is like the top four uh, after every DPC season can remain with their spot slots in the division one, while the rest of the teams will have to have a like a um uh what do you call it like. Uh, matches like with the division two to see if they are still qual- qualified for division one, or uh, if the division twos are better instead of just having the bottom two and the bottom two of division one and uh, top two of division two uh, switch places every season. Um, the, it just after the international, just do it after the international because okay. there is so many roster changes that you cannot know if the team is still on the top or no. Like you basically cannot know that, and because of that, it's well, so like a it's total right. total reset after every season, like after every TI, except the top four. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just I guess all you can also leave the, the TI winner or the teams that are qualified for the international. Like, like you can let them be uh, the division one, but. Uh, uh, I think the the main idea is you, you just let's say roster was changed from five players to five other players. Yes, and you cannot know if they will be performing, but because like organization the, have the ability to slot. do this. Yeah, yes, yes. yeah, org has the slot. So uh, imagine. You're, you're like <laughs> that uh, one team that didn't switch, and now you win everything. But this is kind of unfair to to the teams that you know they didn't switch the slot, and they're stronger than others. And it's uh, yeah, it's kind of unfair. You see, so uh. One of my friends was uh, suggesting me to ask you what do you think about teams buying slots in DPC? Because I know this has happened a bit uh, recently. That uh, like teams, uh, I think it happened with uh, Bait, if I'm not wrong. Uh, they bought the DPC slot from a different team. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I think. Yeah, there there should be some restrictions. Like, let's say there is at least like two players need to remain, or I don't know, at least one player should remain from the last roster or something. Um. Uh, so if I remember right, last DPC in the any region, like uh, the captain who had registered the team for uh, DPC, kinda kicked. Uh, I don't remember which this team was. He kinda. Uh, removed four of his teammates and uh, agreed to uh, join a different org with the same slot, but with four other people. I don't remember exactly which uh, team this was, yeah. but uh, I think it, it was a bait, like hustlers and bait. Uh, uh, I think it was. Uh, it happened in uh, NA two, so I'm not really sure because. It was uh, something that uh, happened quite a bit, even mm-hmm. last season, not just this season. This season, I think it just happened with Bait, but last season there was a few other teams like 
I don't remember the names exactly, but yes. So yeah, there is. Was... Yeah. Uh, so, no, no, there there were some from NA, but I don't remember the name. Like the the guy sold the slot, so the the team to uh, five stack of girls and. Uh... No, oh, yes. Well, uh... th this should not be possible in in this context. But honestly, I don't have a solution other than like just to remain. Like couple players need to remain, or you lose the slot. So should it be like the players need to agree on it or, and like not just one person has the say? No, 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 no. Like what should happen is uh, you had the, the roster and uh, what should happen with the roster is if you want to switch, you can only switch like number of players or like okay. make at least one remain or something. Uh, or you, you need to be like move to the list of uh, qualifying teams like are you qualified to play in this with your current roster or no that should be okay. the case like maybe that's like the way to do this yeah that that's kind of understandable because the original team that did play to get the slot is no longer playing so the need new team should probably have to you know, re uh, play for the slot again. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. You you just add this team to the pool. Like, let them switch five players. It's fine, but you need to get them into the qualifier that kind of either adjusts their position uh, in the division, like either moves them to division two or out of division. Mm -hmm. Uh, out of Division 2, or, you know, like, if they're worthy, then they can keep staying in Division 1 and be fine with it. But, uh, like, just to keep the work or the players in there, it's just, like, some kind of bullshit. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so, yes, uh, about your uh, DPC qualifiers, like, you, do you have anything you'd like to share about? I know you guys uh, recently were in the open qualifiers. Mm -hmm. And uh, you did tell me that it didn't go well. So how was it? Well, the, the only thing I would actually change is like about the East Europe qualifier is uh, just to make it uh, uh, like make slots from open qualifier let's say four plus four right mm -hmm. like four from the first qualifier uh, four from second qualifier and then just make the close qualifier with those eight teams with three slots it's going to be the same but a bit less pressure and maybe a bit less games because um what we had to go through is uh, imagine you're waking up uh, you need to be like I remember there's all our very high competitive games very high yeah. level competitive com competitiveness so you need to wake up do your things then you need to play the game for the like 10 plus hours against very high teams like very high level dots you need to be able to endure this and like let's say you're second on the qualifier and there there is still going to be a second qualifier but you are second in this qualifier and you know you you don't get anything for that all you True. all you need all you get is uh, you you've played for more than everyone else you have less time to uh chill to rest and then on the next day, you still need to play this 10 hours or something. And what I had at the second day of the qualifier is like, uh, my right eye went whole red mode. Oh. Uh, for example, you, you, know, you know the girl from One Punch Man? That's like uh, when he like becomes the monster, kind of. Like my, my like kind of went full red mode. 
after that. I had a like pain in the spine somewhere. It's all because like yeah, you need to like sit for a lot and yeah. That's like just too many games with uh, too little break times of nothing you get. And okay. y- that's like the probably the worst thing. Yeah, but if they made it uh with the close qualifier with a bit of time uh, it could have been better, L- like everyone else made. It. It's just the complaint about the Eastern Europe qualifier. No, but um, yes, go ahead. Go um, ahead. Mm, other than that, we well, I I'm not saying that these results are not fair. It's just um, let's say you cannot show the full performance. And it's Our kind shoes. of a so endurance test as well. For this environment. I would enjoy to win, of course, and mm-hmm. we could win. Uh, I think the most. One sec. Uh, the the most games that well we had more chances of winning are uh, against uh, CS rejects. The first game against Tinker with Doom, uh, we could have won that for sure. Like we had a blasting start, and uh, against Kidra on the second qualifier, that's that was our games, uh, our game as well. I think that was like pretty easy to take the game, but uh, with some couple of mistakes, we just didn't make it, and that's very sad. See. Uh, uh, so regarding the whole, um, uh, wait, where was I going with this? Yes, the whole thing about like the cram, uh, crammed up matches. Like, uh, some might, some people might ask, like, uh, you know, every day, like, people spend like a lot of time just uh, playing like right? the game itself, like endless hours. Uh, like as a as someone who's in the pro scene, like. I'm sure you have to play 10 plus hours a day, right? So how is it different from just your uh, regular pubbing? Um, well, imagine... Uh, well, in pubs, you can go 0-10, lose, and go next, right? Yeah. I, it's just a example out of my head. So you just go 0-10, you lose the game... In 15 minutes, and uh, you can have some time to relax and stuff. But uh, in open qualifier, not only you have no uh, no chance to make a mistake, you have to win everything because that's a best of one uh, derby. You you have mm-hmm. to win everything, and not only that, you also have to uh, how do you call it? Um, yeah, you have to stay. Like very focused till the end of the day. It's like you have okay. to stay that way, and that's like. Uh, imagine how many, uh, how much endurance uh, you need to uh, have so you can stay at the very highest focus for the whole day. It's uh, just you know kind of fucks with your brain. Does the um. Pressure like kind of play in a role of it. I mean, yeah. Does does pressure play a role in it? Are you guys like under pressure every time? Uh, yeah. Or in these qualifiers, a lot of pressure. Does that also affect uh, how you guys play? Sorry, could you repeat? Please? Okay. So, uh, so yes, uh, you know, in open quali, I mean. In the everyday pubs, you're not under that much pressure, and uh, in, oh, yeah. in 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 open qualifiers, you're under pressure because this is something you are trying to get into, and uh, this is something the next few months of your uh, life uh, is gonna be based around, right? So does all that pressure kind uh, of impact how you perform in the games as well? Uh well, yes, but at the same time, you, you try to not think about other things inside of the game. Mm-hmm. Still, some, something can split uh, split in, uh, like slip 
through through your uh, focus, but uh, you tend to not think about like if you win or lose, or you're going to play the DPC. You're just trying to play the game. Uh, but uh, mostly outside of the game, of course, you have those thoughts, and uh, these thoughts are inevitable. And uh, to be honest, I like the way uh, how Alliance did this. They only think about their next game, and that's like the how things should be. You're only thinking about the next game. Mm-hmm. So there is still some pressure in every game, and pressure can get to you, and that's another um, skill that you can develop. But you can mm-hmm. only develop such skill playing against like very strong teams in a very competitive environment. Let's say you're playing against uh, uh, these teams like for something, like in the tournaments. But uh, if you lack the experience and they don't, they will have some advantage because they know how to deal with the emotions, the pressure, and that's their advantage. And that's your disadvantage. Of I see. But uh, yeah, there is... A th- I think there is a ways of developing this uh, anti-stress, uh, anti-stress tactics. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, okay, w- one last question before we can get playing. Like, uh, so, sure. so how how do I put this? So, I know uh, I I uh, talked to you a lot about how uh, people get burnt out when playing this game. So something that I have recently been hearing a lot is that uh, Dota is not fun anymore. Like, have you been in the spot before where you felt like, yeah, Dota is not just not fun right now? And uh, if you have, like, how are you dealing with it? How do you deal with it? Like, yeah, uh, I hope you got my point, what I'm asking. Yeah, Dota is not fun. Well... First of all, you you make it fun. Like, if you cannot think of anything to do in the game, if it's not fun, well, it can it can be on you. It can also be on the game, right? But mm-hmm. uh, uh, in this game, there is always can be something fun. You can, let's say, switch to another mode or switch to another character to make it fun. But of course, like the the biggest role in this is uh, your hunger to the games. Like, how badly do you want to play? And if you have no hunger, like if you're not hungry, you're not going to eat. So that's that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. About like people make it fun. Like if it's not fun for you. Uh, mm-hmm. doesn't mean it's not fun for everyone, but at the same time, uh, maybe you are missing something, uh, like, let's say you're missing the purpose of your playing, then, of course, like, there is a need to play, uh, for, for some amount of time. Maybe, like, the hunger will grow back, but... Ah, yes, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I talk about it as like uh, the itch, like uh, the itch to play Dota. Like you take a break, and somehow maybe a week, maybe a month, it always comes back. Like um, it's uh, it's I, I it's been memed around that no one ever truly quits Dota because after a while they get that itch to play it again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's. Uh, that's the hunger. Uh, I think just there is, uh, there might be some games that can give you this uh, similar experience, but uh, uh, I think uh, it's very important to understand that like Dota requires a lot of attention from you, mm-hmm. attention from your brain, and it gives you the, t- the challenge for your brain. And your brain... If it has the challenge, if it remembers it once, uh, it might seek for this challenge because this is like interesting for the brain, and that's why like Dota is one of the most played games 
on yeah. a daily basis. True. true. Uh, so I I know I did say it like the this question would be the last one, but I just have one more question that I want sure, to sure. ask. So yeah, Dota is like uh, this game that heavily depends on your teammates, right? Like it it heavily depends on the other four guys you are playing with. Sure. Now, um, you are someone who plays on a regular basis with a uh, fixed bunch of stack. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, you try to coordinate really well and stuff. So, uh, like what I'm going uh, with this is like. There's all the uh, there's always going to be conflict, right? Like you are always going to be like, oh, you should have done that. This should have happened. We shouldn't have done that. Uh, okay. Like your teammates are always going to be uh, pointing out stuff or asking stuff about why you didn't do this, why you didn't do that, and uh, there's going to be escalations between teammates when you're playing. How how do you deal with it? How are you dealing with it? Like, uh, do you guys just um, discuss it? Or uh, is there uh, some someone in the team who um, you know talks to uh, takes in all of this and uh, like you know uh, makes it all work out? Is what I'm going mm. for. I don't know if I uh, if, uh, phrased it right, but I hope you got it. No, no, I understand you. Like, how do you solve the conflicts in the in the, in the team? Right? Yeah, that's the question. Like in the how do we do this? Like, how do I do this for my team? Yeah. Correct? Like, yeah, there there might be conflicts, and I think the conflicts are inevitable. We have five players with five different visions. So the conflict is going to be, like, it's going to be present all the time. And... Uh, it kind of... So you need like five players to have the same goal. And well, communication is the key in this to kind of seeing each other perspective and uh, trying to understand the best without like, you know, being in defensive position that, oh, I might be, you might be right. But I will not give it to you because like it will make me look bad. People should not be in this position. People should be in position of uh, mm -hmm. how can we make this better always. And even if something is not going as planned, uh, uh, you can still uh, like take a break, talk about it with the mm -hmm. team together in a like you know the key is to do this without emotions. But emotions are going to be present after the game, so make it like a little cool down before you <laughs> before actually go and discuss the match with the teammates. Because like in some days the emotions will fly away and you will not uh you will not uh, be as patient vulnerable as you were uh, in the same day. And yeah. it's just going to be a lot better for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can and uh, understand. Of course, we have like the coach who can help us with some situations, and uh, everyone kind of needs the individual approach. But mostly, is like, like, what is your goal as a party of five? or as a team of five, or as a stack, what would be your goal? And if everyone understands that, like, is it just to have fun? Mm -hmm. uh, is it just to, like, is it to improve? Is it to win the international? Like, each of the goals is important. Yeah. And uh, just have to... Uh, like, be chill with your teammates, and they will be chill with you. <laughs> Conflicts are <laughs> inevitable. They're going to pre uh, to be present. They're going to happen. But uh, what determines you, even, like, I think the same advice goes to, uh, like, relationship. Mm -hmm. There is no uh, relationship 
there is no pair of people who don't have the conflicts. If people don't have the conflicts, maybe they don't care about each other. But uh, if people have the conflicts and they solve them, they stay together. Because if conflicts are not solved, they often like lead to even more conflicts and kind of Eventually, yeah. get so hot that you cannot stand this burn and people just move out. And that's exactly the same with the teams. The teams that uh, can get through this like conflict stage become much more stronger because they understand how to solve the conflict, but mm -hmm. also they like they found a solution to this. And yeah, that's uh, that's something I heard from the series called Scrubs, and it, it kind of stuck uh, stuck with me. <laughs> until this day and i think this is like this is like uh, sounds like a true true thing yeah um uh, yeah i can understand uh about that yeah mm -hmm. so like uh you know uh so yes uh, i i do understand that like uh dealing with the conflicts is uh kind of important like you kind of have to compromise and understand what your uh, teammates need and try mm -hmm. to add it into how you play and or or if there are any faults or mistakes or uh, say um in, in, where i play who the people i play i know i i'm I kinda i'm really bad and uh, but i still do understand uh, what they are asking me to do and i try to get it done right Mm -hmm. So that kind of works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work. So I guess, uh, yeah, kind of communication does play a lot. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Um, well, not only that, but... Uh... Oh, you you mentioned that well you have four people that you need to depend on. Uh, I can turn this around and say you have four people that depend on you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the yeah. matter of perspective. Oh yeah, true. Okay. Uh, well, that's all the questions I actually had uh, mm -hmm. prepared to ask. Um, so. Thanks a lot for answering them and uh, uh, all the best well, with uh, whatever you're up to next. So, thanks. Uh, so we, we just mm -hmm. play now. We j just want to chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we can we can just play. You can uh, invite me or add me, and we, we just go through uh, ability draft and uh, like Oops. whatever region you 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 want to. Um, let me just check my ping. Sure. I mean, I don't care about the ping. I can play with it. Just, with the uh, ping. anyway. Yeah, can just, I just play. Sure. Yeah. Oh, You're going to be able to draft, so... Yeah, it's good luck big. if you don't know the rules. Uh, it's I big. have <laughs> never played WT draft before. <laughs> but, uh, it, It's quite uh, a fun. I played it once, actually. Uh, can I get your uh, ID? Uh, I gave it to you, I think. Oh, uh, this okay. Yeah, I sent an invite. Uh, one sec. Uh, try it again. Yeah. Okay, one second. Uh, can you give me your uh, code as well, Royal Bug? I think uh, 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 we're different on Steam. Uh, one sec. I'll I'll invite him. Yeah, I hope my questions made sense. I'm I'm uh pretty they new at this. They made perfect sense. They made perfect sense.
I have also oh. a question. I mean, I don't know since I joined Canalat, but like, um, how do you train for like open qualifier or other events as, as a team? Well, it's a lot of repetition. It's a lot of scrims. It's a lot of like getting into your best shape for the qualifier. If this makes sense, you just get, uh, yeah. you just play for a bit. To get in the sense that, well, you you know what will happen. Like for example, for the laning stage, sometimes when I play a lot, play on one character, I know what will happen and when, and I know how to deal with this. I know I like I predict a lot of things, basically, and yeah. I feel warm. I feel that like I know every situation or most of the situations, or at least I will be able to get through it uh, quick enough so I can uh, like solve it. Oops. Oops. Uh, can you like... I found him. Oh yeah, nice, yes. Very nice. Hey, I'm friend with, um, with Prats. So uh oh what will be your ideal ping? Uh mine? Yeah I'm fine with like anything have... from one ten. Like whatever like ju just choose one for you. Cause you you have like uh one hundred and thirty ping on the India, but I like like I, I, I don't care what we play like we can play russia we can play europe west europe east it doesn't really matter like just choose one that you play often on and we'll just go uh i think europe west might work west or east let me just check uh anything else that's kind of in the suitable region like 110 120 is totally fine i, I guess we can just go for uh 130 ping. I choose automated. Okay. Russia is the automated one. But... Okay, I'll just choose Europe West. Let's see. I... Yeah, Europe West I'm seems to have ping. the best ping. Sure. So, yeah, back to, to how you uh like get ready for this uh imagine you're getting ready for the test <laughs> like we all get uh, going through the school yeah. or like university of some sort uh so uh, imagine you're preparing for the test you need to know this 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 you need to keep that in mind you need to have a good sleep before you before the qualifier and yeah it really depends on like how you handle your nerves, like before the exam, and uh, if you are going to be able to do everything in the correct order, you'll have a like better grade. But if you won't, you might not even pass it. So yeah, that's something like that. You see. Mm -hmm. So, if you haven't played Ability Draft, let me just explain how it works. Okay. Um, so, before the game starts, you have, like, to draft the abilities you like. And you have, you are going to be in some position, right? For example, mm -hmm. I think the best positions are either first or last. Uh, because you can, like, for the last, you can, you are going to take two abilities at the at the same time, two times. Yeah. And for the first, you're going to take the most broken ability. Like, that's... And something in, in between, they're going to be, like, less good, but still, like, you can still make some viable things. Uh, a lot of stuff depends on the hero model you have. For example, if you're going to be, I don't know, Ab Abaddon, or Axe, mm -hmm. you're going to play the Strength Hero, and for example, you take the ability that uh, 
going to give you edgy, like for example, Stark uh, passive, then it is not going to be as good as if you were playing uh, agility hero. And another case, if you, for example, you're a ranged hero and you take Bash of oh, Spirit Breaker or uh, Slider, yeah, it, it will proc for sure, but it's oh. incredibly strong because, like, Bash on uh, ranged heroes, it's just so, <laughs> so strong. Okay. I, yeah. Oh, it's, it becomes like Basher on Sniper. Yeah, it can become the Basher on Sniper. But better. For example, you're playing uh, some hero and you have like the bash ability on the range hero. You you're just like you don't even need to come close, and you have like still have the percentage of that ability or void bash. Oh. Kind of the same thing, nice. but you get the extra hit. It's uh, a lot of stuff. There is a lot of broken things that you can find there, depending on the build. But at the same time, uh, there is. Um, yeah, there is sometimes like it's all counterable. Oh, there is I, I, oh uh, I, I remember this once when I played ability draft, like uh, when I was uh, getting into Dota. This was super early. I thought mm -hmm. uh, if you pick uh, Bristleback's uh, passive, like the Bristleback passive, uh, it will uh, proc. But turns out if you don't have your uh, W, the passive will not proc. Yeah. There was something and I found out the hard way. I, I never went back to Ability Draft after that. <laughs> well, yeah, there is uh, some stuff like that you need to know. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, there is a lot of broken stuff. Like, for example, Caustic Final on some heroes is very broken. Like, especially ranged heroes, because it's basically 25% slow with the ability to farm faster or uh, for example there is some things that you mentioned like spirit breaker uh, passive with uh, with knock wheels same goes with spirit breaker ulti mm -hmm. sorry like bristol back bristol back passive yeah spirit breaker ulti without bash will not stun people will just deal damage oh <laughs> yeah as a faulty without souls will not do anything as well. <laughs> and there is oh. all those stuff like this. So as much as uh, it can make some things broken, it pretty much be, uh, makes the other half like useless. Or pretty bad, I guess. Yeah, you can make a very bad build. <laughs> oh, That's <boy>. like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 but... Um... I think about ability draft, this is still Dota. Like, we recently played ability draft uh, tournament. I think we, yeah, we, we won it. And uh, uh, the only way why we won it is because, like, we, we still play the same Dota, but it's just going to be, like, a bit different because mm -hmm. of the abilities and you'll have like some characters that are going to be better on certain positions and we try to make make one carry uh hero one mid one off lane stuff like that and do, yeah there, there is yeah do the um do the normal uh positions actually still apply in this game like does it uh does it really work when you're playing a hero that actually has no support skills abilities i mean um and, uh, well you don't need to play it that way mm -hmm. right but uh you're like you can basically play five carries and it's fine uh, uh it just de depends on like what abilities you actually have or what abilities uh Enemies have because sometimes, like when you have five carries, you need to farm for a bit longer. And if you need to farm for a bit longer, maybe enemies need to farm for a bit less. And when they found their timings, you still haven't found yours. And what will happen is you're going to get stomped <laughs> only because, like, you're trying to 
find like five carry heroes, but uh, usually in ability draft it kind of works uh, the way that you're you're going to be uh, drafting. Like uh, usually you can only make like just a couple of heroes on the carry position that are going to be strong because. Uh, how they call it? Well, the ability, <laughs> you know, you can make like for example four, uh, four abilities that are passives, right? Like yeah. I don't know, time ulti, uh, bloodseeker passive. Um, I know some attack speed. Yeah, uh, and uh, like some life steal or crit or whatever. It is like maybe this is a decent build. But you will lack the ability for the early game. Like oh. imagine, yeah. So like, uh, if I have four passives, I literally won't have any burst damage at all. My lane is going to be very weird. Yeah, your lane is going to be uh, uh, more weak than uh, if you were to have, like, let's say. Instead of one passive, you get like one ability, one new core, or something. That's like also how it works in Dota sometimes. For example, heroes that are going to skill through passives, there. Yeah, there are some heroes that can do that, like Chen, like Wisp, but usually mm -hmm. it's not going to be as as good. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so how often do you play ability draft? Uh, to the fray. Lately, I don't didn't play it, like too much, but uh, once in a while, once uh, in a while you... I just visit it. So, uh, yeah. so other than Dota and the other uh, game which you mentioned earlier, the one where you said like uh, you're stuck with some level, uh, do you play any other game to like just uh, unwind and relax? Like uh, yeah. just to chill. Sure. There what is... other games do you try? Uh, Kingdom Two Crowns. Like, uh, if you know, like that, it's a two D game that uh, has, uh, let's say, that's a good game to chill. Doesn't require too much attention from you. You can just play with mm -hmm. just one hand and relax. And. Oh, it's a side what scroller. Left? What? It's a side scroller. Yeah, yeah, basically. Maybe just the game to show. You don't need to do much. Uh, there are some other games like Raise the Sun. is a very nice one. You, you're just going to, like, Raise the Sun is basically you're uh, trying to raise the sun. You're trying to... Uh, reach the sun, but sun is always going to be faster and you need to be at the very high velocity all the time, or the sun will get out from your range, and because you're uh, flying the plane that has the solar battery, mm -hmm. no sun, no solar uh, energy, and you're just going to be uh, well, you're Taste going to get stuck. Sun. So there, that's the second one. And there are some occasional games like I enjoyed Hades at the time. I played it. It got a bit boring after some while, but mm -hmm. still nice. Um, I enjoyed Disco Elysium a lot. Disco what? Disco, disco Elysium. Game. Disco Elysium. No, it's not a disco. Like... Uh, well, basically, that's do you know Dungeons and Dragons? Disco Elysium, is that it? Yeah, yeah. If you know Dungeons and uh, Dungeons and Dragons, this is basically yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, but uh, like a lot of um, mechanics are borrowed from there, and you have a narrow uh, character who just tells everything. And the game itself is is very interesting. It has a very interesting uh, universe, and uh, yeah. It's basically very interesting to play that. The art style definitely looks uh, very cool. It's like it has this uh, very hand painted style to it. 
Mm -hmm. So this is something I'd like to check out. From what you say, it sounds like Dungeons and Dragons, but a bit more. Uh, it's, it's like a city based, I guess, like a bit more modern. Like I am looking at the images right now and uh, the art style is definitely interesting. Art style is interesting. Um, the there is no combat gameplay. Right. There's no combat? There is no combat there. Okay. You're basically like reading a book but with some choices and uh, depending on how developed your character is you mm -hmm. can uh you can get uh, uh, how they call it well you you can get some interesting dialogues and sometimes being bad doesn't mean you're actually bad like let's say your character is stupid right mm -hmm. but doesn't mean it uh, it is bad or something it because it he might be good at something else ah uh. same for like if your character is good at uh uh like with coordination right of the body it might also be bad because you're going to check some uh, some of the like you're going to pass some check and what will happen is uh, you're i know you're dead <laughs> Because you passed that. So it's it's all about the story. You're exporting the old story then. Yeah. Ah, see. Mm. Yeah, there is some different ways of doing this. Uh, sh <laughs> should I restart the queue? Like, it's been like 15 minutes. We haven't uh, found a match. <laughs> I don't know, actually. Maybe we can get some servers let me see yeah the more servers let's see it like this So currently, what is your uh, favorite hero to play, both of you? Um, <laughs> sniper. Sniper. Yeah. Uh, oh, what position are you trying sniper? Like, uh, well, I three, like four. four or five. Four and five but support it's... sniper. Yeah, yeah. It's just is, a support sniper. Is support sniper still good? Because I remember yeah, it, it was a thing few patches ago. It's not as good. But it's decent. I would say it like that. It can be played in some games where there is no spirit breaker, there's no people that run at you. But basically spirit breaker in, is in every game, on every position, and yeah. I remember uh, like a while ago Spirit Breaker was just a like a meme pick. And now back. it's like a really meta pick. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> sure uh, shows how much uh, meta changes in Dota. Something that was uh, pretty meme is like now the most picked. <laughs> yeah. It's always the case. Uh, first, they start with the memes and then memes become, become their reality. <laughs> memes become their reality. Oof, that, that, that. Sounds like something that you should quote. Memes become reality. I mean, that's always the case. Yeah. Like uh, Donald Trump becoming the president, that's just meme becoming the reality. <laughs> you oh, know? <boy. laughs> that's always the case. Always. Yeah, that, that, that one line like has a lot of... Uh exploring to do because mm, a lot of memes do become reality that is true 
So, um, are you playing any heroes that oh in uh like are you trying any heroes that are not normally off lane? Like, I still want to play off lane, but uh, I, like I said, I haven't played in a while, so mm -hmm. I don't know if I should play off lane or should I just play support anymore. Uh, and, uh, well, for me. Of course, there's going to be some like I need to still play my role most of the times because I need to stay in uh, in a good state for my team. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think this is very important to play what you want to play, like whatever position you want to play. And sometimes I have a feeling of, uh, let's say, I just want to. Uh, to test something like let's say i, I enjoy playing uh, spirit breaker okay so i just oh uh, or sorry uh down breaker not the spirit breaker ah. okay okay right and so i'm like all right i'm gonna play down breaker for in this game uh, can I invite some of my friends? I think it might help. Uh, yeah, sure. Find uh, the match. Like, uh, let me just invite some. Hopefully, it helps. Uh, uh, he left. It's fine. He's uh, he's going ranked. I think. Sag. So sometimes we we do play unranked, right? But uh, like they they just don't wanna try the other modes for uh, some reason. I I see. I see. Oh, well, it's it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's what what I was afraid. <laughs> uh will happen. Nobody plays ability wrath Sage. Even after I mean it turn. sounds very interesting. Like uh they, they, Dota definitely has a lot of uh cool game modes, but uh people don't really try to play the other modes. Because uh, well the only mode that actually matters is the ranked mode, right? Well, any mod that matters to you matters. <laughs> <laughs> it really. Oh, so I mean, we can say that, but the thing with uh, people's mindset is, uh, their rank matters a lot, and uh, uh, the only mod that actually lets them go up is that one game mode, and if they are putting time into it, uh, I guess they just want to play that one mode. Uh, uh, people sure. like uh, from what I've seen, people prioritize the rank more than if they're having fun. Like uh, even if they are not having fun, they'll just continue to play just because uh, they want to go for that rank up. Right? I see. I mean, this is not the way it's supposed to to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, so... I'll be right back one second. Someone's knocking. Sure, sure, sure. Do you do some like in house uh, for fun, uh, Iru? Or not at all? Uh, sorry? Uh... Do you do in house for fun? I don't know, there's some um, Discord server was specialized for in house. And, um, 
just wanted to know if you do some time in house just for the funds. Like, I mean, it's uh, not for clubs, it's. Uh... Yeah, I, like, there was the. Uh, Mango server where, where I did some in house. in houses, but. It's, uh, like. Not recently. Sometimes, yes, but. Not recently. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so yeah, uh, like I was saying, like, uh, some people just, uh, even if they're not having fun, they just uh, keep playing rank. So at point, at some point when they're like completely burnt out, they are so done with uh, the game that they just uh, decide not to play it anymore. I see. It's just, uh, it's just how people's minds work. At least uh, here. I mean, that's usually how things work. If uh, like the about the burnout, you need to like you cannot solve it once it happened. You can only prevent it. And uh, mm-hmm. what what should happen is uh, you need to understand your value, even though you are losing the games. Like it doesn't. Like losing doesn't mean you are a bad player. Yeah. Uh, it can give you some messages, but uh, it doesn't mean you are like bad as a person. Okay. Right? So you need to keep the value. Like you need to understand that you you still have the value as a person, and it doesn't define you as a human being, even though like things don't work out right now. It will uh it will only stay this way if you like wish for it to stay this way. And oh, usually yeah. like like when you already like have the burnout, just uh, back to the drawing board, have a little break, understand what you're good at, and maybe like try to uh get that in. Cause yeah. Another thing is uh to have a book of your success. You're just like having the book of success and you're writing down everything that you are successful successful with. Like let's say you you had a very good laning stage with the centaur, which mm-hmm. you usually don't have a good laning stage with. You write that down. Yeah. You you uh, you, you, uh, you you like you dealt with the dishes, right? Write that down. Like you got up in the time and got some um, uh, like good uh, gymnastic for the start of the day. Write that down. And there is a lot. Like let's say there is a tilting teammate, uh, and you're like make sure that they don't tilt even more, and just write that down again. So it kind of like. What it will give you is it will make you understand that there is not only bad things in your life, mm-hmm. but also maybe you're doing something something good. You're just like, you know, like the value of the things you just it's for some reason you didn't care about them before. But once you start focusing on the bright side, you'll find like you're doing all the things in the correct way. And mm-hmm. yeah. Just uh, try to keep uh, seeing what you're doing right and uh, try to keep doing it. Um, well, it kind of the exercise is for you to understand that, well, you, you mm-hmm. have a value because like burned out person doesn't think he has a value and uh. he's often like disappointed. He's like apathic. Doesn't want to do anything. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, yes, for you, something like that can also happen. Like if you understand that you're doing something in the correct way, you can, uh, like, get it through your head a couple of times, and then uh, you'll understand it better. Like you, you'll the the chance that it will happen again if you repeat it in your mind a couple mm-hmm. of times 
like the way it works the, the correct way it should be is uh like much more higher than if you don't do anything about this uh okay uh, i don't think we'll, we'll yeah, find yeah. a game I'll, I'll, yeah. well thanks guys for joining the um <laughs> uh, search simulator it's been like some good while uh, uh it's been 30 uh, minutes of search simulation i guess Yes, yes, yes. That's like that. I was afraid that will happen, but what can you do? What can you do? Yes. Oh, also, uh, someone just donated like eighty-seven dollars, and that kind of uh let us uh reach the whole uh charity goal, which I was trying to go for, and uh, they didn't use their name, so I I just like to thank them. For the donor. Nice. Yeah. Like, mm -mm. I mean, I yes. Thanks once again. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, thank you. It's, it's sad we can't play, but uh, uh, I guess I'll okay. uh, we'll try some other time, and uh, yeah, maybe next time. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe next time. Yeah. yeah. Hey okay, guys. Yeah, I'll thanks for having me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for joining. Thanks for the time. I hope uh, I did well. <laughs> it's my uh, first time like asking all these questions, and uh, I hope they didn't, did I didn't well. offend you or anything. Oh no. It's okay. very hard to offend me. You need to uh, try. But uh, it's very hard, so don't worry about that. Okay, yeah. Thanks for having me here. See you guys. GGs. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank bye you bye. once again. Thank I you. will see you later. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, folks. Uh, we just wanted to play a bit, but we couldn't find any ability drafts, and uh, we can't actually play any of the normal match modes because you know smurf in problems and stuff can't really have that damn and uh well this was just uh part one i mean this was just uh the first stream for the day i am gonna be having another stream and uh a big thanks to whoever donated uh we have of officially reached the charity goal for the whole thing I'm, I'm still kind of uh, out of breath because, uh, yeah, I, I expected uh, to not reach it and uh, that it would take a bit more and like uh, it might have taken me a few more days to at least uh, reach like 20% of it. Uh, but who donated? Uh, thanks a bunch. Thanks a lot. Um. Yes, I'll see you guys uh, in the second part of the stream. Uh, as much as I would like to play, I do have to set up the other stream with the other uh, content creator. Like I talked about collabing with, we are going to be having uh, Rook, who is also a fairly new VTuber, who will be joining us later. Um, yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this talk. And I do get it that uh, I wasn't. I mean, I, I do know that I wasn't that good, but I hope you guys uh, got something interesting out of that and enjoyed having them over. So, yes, I'll see you guys later. Um, thanks again uh, for dropping by and uh, listening to us talk. Later, everyone. <laughs>